So we thank God that we are yet alive. And we are here because God has a purpose. And God is intentional with everything that he does. So we do love the Lord with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. I'd like to recognize my husband, uh, uh, Deacon Bobby Nixon. He's the first man and the only man. And now it's 54 years. April 19th, we were married for 54 years. Wow. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, we were babies when we were married, praise God. Praise but God. I thank God for him. He's still the cream in my coffee. Yeah. And he's still the sugar in my Kool-Aid. Yeah. And he still makes my heart go pitter-patter. <laughs> oh, yes, he does, amen. Because he takes good care of me. I tell you, I tell you, God is first in my life and he comes next. Come on, somebody, give God praise for your significant other. Amen. We help one another. We never know who's going to be helping who. We never know. But I just thank God for him. I had two knee replacements, right knee, left knee, and look like arthritis and uh, bursitis, everything want to attack me. And I know the devil is a liar because by his stripes we are healed. And I know it's an attack of the enemy because I have a healing ministry. Praise God. I've seen God do miracles and wonders in my sight. My next door neighbor, she, when I moved next to her, I went over and she said, I have cancer. I said, well, praise God, we're going to pray for you, sister. So I prayed for her, and I was living in the parsonage in Brooklyn, so every now and then I would go back to my house in Valley Stream. So one day, maybe after a year, she came out, came running outside saying, Reverend, Reverend. I said, yeah. She said, I've been healed. I don't have cancer anymore. Hey, glory to our God. Hey, hallelujah. So our misery becomes our ministry. So I believe God for healing. I believe that whatever's wrong with us, God can heal it. Amen. We call him Jehovah Rophah, the God that healeth us. Amen. And when we get to what we call the adult or older people, we need to hold on to God's unchanging hand, knowing that he can do anything and everything but fail. Amen. 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 I, I know I'm supposed to be preaching, but I have a whole lot on the inside that I got to get out. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you again for this invitation to share with you on Pentecost Sunday and your adult ministry day. So we're, we're honored to be here. And the scriptures were already read before you. But our theme this morning to correlate with yours is walking in the Holy Ghost power. Walking in Holy Ghost power. When we talk about it's in my hands and in my soul and in my feet, somebody ought to know that we're on fire for the Lord. Amen. They ought to know that walking in the Holy Ghost means that we have power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When we woke up this morning, the devil should, the devil should have been mad. Yeah. Huh? Yes. But we, we shouldn't let him rule our life. He should have said, uh-oh, she's up and she's going to cause some problems today. Yes. 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 We've been called by God to make a difference in this world. Yes. So we're walking in Holy Ghost power. Yes. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to proclaim your word. Father, I pray, God, that you will open the ears of your people, God. Open our minds, open our hearts to receive your word. Father, I pray for Rhema made word for every individual and then a word for us collectively. Father, I pray that you will throw your weight around this place this morning. Oh, God, if everyone, anyone needs healing this morning, oh, God, I ask right now that you touch them so that their mind will be attentive to the word of God. Oh, God, have your way in this place. 
Empower us, O oh God, to do what you have called us to do, to preach your word and to hear your word on this day. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. There's only one scripture right now that I would just like to read again in your hearing. And that's Acts and the first chapter and verse 8. Verse 8. And I'm reading from the NIV. NIV. Okay, the eighth verse. And I'm in the wrong chapter. Acts 1 8. Okay, I'm getting there. All right. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. 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 Tell somebody next to you I'm going to walk in the Holy Ghost power. I'm going to walk in the Holy Ghost power. The power that was given to us on the day of Pentecost. Now we know that we just commemorated the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But for 50 days after Jesus' resurrection and his return to heaven, the Holy Ghost came as Jesus had promised it would. For 40 days, Jesus walked the earth after he had risen from the grave. He showed himself to the people and to the disciples to prove that he had risen from the dead. In Luke 24, 46 to 53, he gave the disciples the great commission to go into all of the world and to teach his gospel. It's also in Matthew 28, uh, verses 19 and 20. Jesus also commanded them to go to the upper room and to wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. And then he ascended to heaven. He returned back to heaven. He commanded the disciples to wait in the upper room and they would be endued with power. Now we know it was a crowd of people. I believe that it was more than 120. But it says that only 120 were in the upper room. So only 120 of them were obedient to Jesus. And we know sometimes we have a hard time being obedient to what, what the Lord wants us to do. So whatever God tells you to do, do it. Amen. Amen. Or you're going to miss your best blessing. So the 120 were obedient and went to the temple. That what the, we call the upper room to worship Jesus, to worship and to wait on Jesus' word that was as he had commanded them, letting them know that they would receive power. But you shall receive power. Amen. 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 So 40 plus 10 is 50. So on the 50th day, and Pentecost means 50, yeah. after Jesus went back to heaven, after he ascended, the Father sent the Holy Ghost. Because he said, I'm going to pray that the Father will send the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yeah. So 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, we call it on Easter Sunday, he rose, Sunday morning. The Father sent the Holy Ghost as Jesus had prayed. So the request and the promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Amen. 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 So when we come to Acts 2, well, let's find Acts 2. Praise God. Amen. Acts 2. I'm going over to Acts 2. Go with me if you have the word. I always, okay. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. So they, that same people, 120, were all together. Huh? And suddenly, a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amen. 
a mighty rushing wind. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them. And they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. So here we see the actual coming of the Holy Spirit in fire, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, or we could say the Holy Ghost. So when he came, it was heard, and it was heard from all around. It sounded like a train coming. It was a mighty wind. I can't make it like I want to out of this mic, but it was a powerful wind. This is the power, the dunamis power that Jesus told the disciples to wait on in Jerusalem. Amen, somebody. He was, he was sending what kind of power? Power for them to do what? To become witnesses. Witnesses. The fire of God. The power to be bold. The power to be brave. The power to be strong and faithful. Not ashamed and not afraid. You will have power to witness for God. Because you have the Holy Ghost. You have dunamis power. You have dynamite power. So we need not be afraid. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. But a spirit of love and power. Come on somebody. Well what is the Holy Ghost power? Holy Ghost power is the anointing. The same power that said that Jesus had is the same power that we have. The power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on us. In the day, on the day of Pentecost, now we no longer have the Holy Spirit around us, but the Holy Spirit lives in us. Hallelujah. Tell somebody the Holy Spirit lives big in me. Oh, glory to God. He lives big in me. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So it lets us know that we're walking around and when we're just one, he said one can chase 1,000. But when we come together, come on, two can put 10,000 to flight. So there's power in numbers as well. The fire of Pentecost came down on the day of Pentecost and the first church was birthed gave us power, fire of the Holy Ghost, the presence of God in our lives through the anointing. It is the power of God. In John 14, 23 to 24, Jesus promised his disciples that he would not just be with them, but he would be in them. He would come to live in them. He said, I'm going to send you another comforter and he will abide in you. He will live in you. So when we walk and when we talk, we know that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is present. We, wherever we go, we need not be afraid and feel alone. You hear people say, oh, I feel so lonely. Huh? Let me tell you, call up the Holy Spirit. Call up the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, he's right there with you. The provision, he gives us provisions, the provision of Pentecost. In Matthew 6, it says, seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So he wants us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We are out looking for this and looking for that and looking for love in all the wrong places. But he's saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I have something for you. One, I give you power to walk upright. I give you power. And then he said, provision. He makes ways for us out of no way. He promised us that he would provide for us. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hey, God has not changed. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he's our power. He's our provider. And then he says he'll give us prosperity. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. He will cause us to prosper. He said, I want you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Amen, somebody. He's a God that causes us 
to prosper. Yes. And then he says in, in Psalm 91, he will protect us. Yes. He's our protection. Yes. He's everything that we need. Yes. So when you are even in the home all alone, Know that God is with you. He's your power. He's your provider. He's your prosperity and your protection. He promised the disciples, he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the world. We have the power to live holy. Amen. When we were born again in John 3 and 3, you remember Nicodemus? the Pharisee, and he came to Jesus because he couldn't understand. He said, how can a man be born again? He said, it's impossible for me to enter my mother's womb again. And Jesus said he was a mighty Pharisee. He was a teacher, and yet he was a night creeper because, and he didn't understand the spiritual things of God. So God had to open the word to him and say, it's not a natural birth, it's a spiritual birth that comes down from heaven. Amen, somebody. So the moment that you're born again, you're a new person. Your spirit has become perfected. Your spirit man. We have three people, we're in three parts, spirit, soul, and body. So our spirit is perfected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we walk around saying we are like Christ, we're perfect like Christ in our spirit man. But God is working on our soul. He's working on our mind. Come on. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But God, hallelujah, is a loving God. So every day he works on us. He's perfecting us so that when he comes back for us, we'll be ready to be with him. Amen. Somebody want to go back? Somebody want to be with Jesus? Yes. Amen. I do. I do. <laughs> Amen. So it teaches us the, the living, living holy. It teaches us how to live holy because we've been born again. So we become living witnesses. Saved and still living with your boyfriend? Hello? I don't think so. The devil is a liar. You can live holy. Yes. We can live holy. Yes. Hello? Yes, and I'm telling you, I mean even seniors. So not just young people. Amen. Yes. Uh-huh. Mr. So-and-so on the block died, and I knew him for 40 years. And I thought he was, they was Mr. and Mrs. because that's what they said. And then I found out that for 40 years, they were shacked up. Hello, somebody. But we've learned how to live holy. We are adult people. Hello, I'm talking to the adults and the young people. But when we receive Jesus, when we're born again, come on, our life changes. Uh, we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. So we live righteously. And righteously means what? It means doing the right thing. The, the first part of righteously is right. So we're going to do the right thing. Mom and daddy taught us the right thing. The Bible teaches us the right thing. Our aunties and uncles teach us the right way to go. Hello? There is a way that seems right. Uh-huh. So we have to know the right way to go and hang out with the right people to talk right to walk right, to love right. So much that they call you Mrs. Right and Mr. Right. They say, uh-oh, here come Miss Right. Here come Mr. Right. Because you're living holy and you're living clean. You're lifting up the name of Jesus. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We're walking in power today. We're walking in power. It was given to you and me when we were born again. So don't tell me I can't live holy. Don't tell me I can't live right. Don't tell me that I got to keep on cussing and fussing. Hello, somebody. Because we're walking in power. So we should be learning, even if we haven't totally changed somebody, but we should be learning how to walk upright, to honor the Lord because we love him. 
Amen. 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 And in Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we want to live right. We want to do right because it is our what? Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have a way of saying, well, you know, everybody's doing it. Everybody. But we don't do it because we're not conformed to the things of this world. We're different. We've been born again. Hallelujah. We're like Christ. Hallelujah. And be not conformed because we have the mind of Christ. Philippians uh, 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So we're new Christians, we're new people. And in Galatians 22, I know all of you know this, says we should be full of the fruit of the Spirit. They'll know you by your fruit. And it's not fruits, it's one, fruit. Fruit, they'll know you by your fruit. So it's one orange sliced up in eight parts, hello? So we have love, we have joy, we have peace, we have patience and long suffering, gentleness, faith, and temperance and meekness. That's how you recognize a Christian. And my pastor would say, we can be fruit inspectors. Amen, somebody. You know them by your fruit. If you don't have love and you're grouchy all the time, go back in the room and say, Lord, touch me again. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. I know I'm preaching right. Yeah. You know, when we get older, we fuddy and duddy and fuss. And the Bible said a man don't even want to live in the house with a fussy wife. He'd rather live on top of the roof. That's what the Bible says. Amen, somebody. So we ought to have some love. We ought to have some joy because we're walking in the power of God. Do you know who you are? I'm a child of the Most High King, and I'm walking in the fruit of the Spirit. I have joy in my heart, and the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I got any people in here filled with joy? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all were dancing like you had joy. Don't sit around sucking on lemons, hallelujah. Take them lemons and make some Kool-Aid or lemonade. Hey, because we have joy in our hearts and we have love. Yay, God. And then Romans 8, 14 says that we've been baptized with, okay, there's one baptism, but there's many, many feelings. So every day when we walk, break up because you know you might have somebody that want to attack you you say lord fill me again fill my cup until it run over fill my cup till it run over in the saucer fill my cup so when they get close to me the love of god will roll over on them fill my cup so the joy that i have will roll over to the other people that i meet Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? <laughs> so when we're filled up, now we will be spirit filled. We will be spirit fed. And the more you feed your spirit, the more you grow. If you eat more of regular food, hello somebody. You, the, the, Okay, there's two, there's three parts now. If you feed the body, the body's going to be stronger than the spirit. If you never feed the spirit food until you come to church on Sunday, then your spirit is weak. So you have to feed the spirit. So now you will be spirit fed. We study the word, right? We come to Bible study, right? We're in prayer meeting, right? Amen, somebody. Oh, this is a wonderful church. <laughs> hey, glory to God. All of them said yes. Pastor, pr praise the Lord. So they're filled with the Holy Spirit. 
You're filled with the word of God. You're spirit led. Amen. So when God speaks to you in your inner ear, in your heart, you hear God speaking. You hear God speaking? Amen, somebody. So on the day of Pentecost, when that mighty Russian power came, he baptized the people that were in the room, 120 Galians and 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 and, and, and uh, for, they had them from Parth Parthians and they had the Israelites from all over and they spoke in different languages where they were able to understand and they had never spoken those languages. So when we receive the Holy Ghost, then we have Holy Ghost power, but we recognize it because we're able to speak in tongues. We got any tongue speaking people in here? Amen. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We have any Holy Ghost baptized people speaking in fire tongues. Amen. 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 If you don't raise your hand, <laughs> don't be ashamed because you're going to get it today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You need that power. Yes. That power causes us to be witnesses for Christ. You've got the power to live holy. Your lifestyle should be holy living. People should know you are a child of God by your lifestyle. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I, when, I was in, when I was working in corporate world, I would sit to my desk and, and people would go through and have problems and, and they didn't always hang out with me, but when they had a problem, they would come over to me and say, uh, Maxine, would you pray for me? They knew who to come to Amen. for prayer. They knew, so people ought to know who you are, amen, You because of your lifestyle. People should know that you are a child of King, of the King. You are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. We have the power to be witnesses, live, living witnesses. In Matthew 5, 13, it says, ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its favor, it's good for nothing. And we know that the salt, when we put salt on our food, it's a preservative. Yeah. We know that it makes it taste better, amen? Yeah. So God is calling us the salt of the earth. So with our power, hello, we're all so salty. We Come on, when people get yeah. next to us, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. They ought to know, they ought to know the difference between us and someone who's not saved. So if you're not salty, if you don't have the power, if you're not living the life of Christ, hallelujah, he said the salt is good for nothing. He also says that we are the light of the world. Hallelujah. We're lights in the world. And if we're lights in the world, he said don't take your light and put it under a bushel. He said, find a lampstand and put your light on the lampstand so people can see you shining. People can see you glowing. Hallelujah. We are the light of the world. So hang that lamp so others can see. Let your light so shine so men and women can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We have work to do. Are you letting your light shine? People know who you are. Amen. They know where to come. Yes. Or they know Aunt, I'm going to Auntie's house because I need her to pray for me. Amen. I'm going to Uncle Joe's house because I know he's a man of God. Yes. Hello, somebody. Amen. We have work to do. Yes. Oh, the young and the old, children and seniors, there is no age limit. Not too young and you're not too old. We all can do something to turn this world upside down. On the day of Pentecost, they wanted to know if these men were full, were drunk. And Peter stood up and he said, no, they are not drunk. He said, this is that which Joel prophesied about. Huh? Glory to God that on the day of Pentecost, huh? that people would prophesy, the women would prophesy, not just the men. Amen, amen. The scriptures were read before us, so we receive power to be witnesses 
in the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. The power to be witness. He tells us in the word, go ye therefore, just like they did on the day of Pentecost, is that 300 people were saved. Amen? I think I got that wrong. How many were saved? 3,000. 3,000 lives were changed. So it was crowds of people that seen the Holy Ghost come with cloven tongues, with fire. And then here Peter gives a sermon and says, these people are not drunk with, with natural wine. They're drunk with the Holy Ghost. So every now and then, look, Pastor, we ought to get drunk. You ever been drunk in the Holy Ghost? You're wobbling all around the place yes, yes, when you get up yes, off your knees. I mean, I mean a real drunk. Yes, Hello, somebody. Yes, you get yes, drunk and you park your car. You don't know where you parked it at. Amen. Hey, yes. somebody been drunk in the Holy Ghost. We all need to get drunk today in God's power. Yes. Hallelujah. And then because they were all united they became one in Christ. They were able to go out into the world and to turn the world upside down. So God is speaking to us, and yet we are saying, oh, I'm too old to go out into the world. We're never too old. Oh, I'm too young. That's not for me to do. Yes, it is. We go shopping. We go to the restaurants. We go to the beauty parlor. Come on, somebody. We go to buy shoes. Oh, yes. So wherever we go, we ought to be a living witness. Every day we ought to be able to tell somebody about the goodness of God because we're walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. God has called us right now when we look around and see all that's going on in the world to change the world. The devil is laughing at us. He's wreaking havoc stealing and raping, killing our babies and our children in school. Yes, yes, we have the power, but we can't even come together to change the gun laws. Lockdown, we've seen it done before. Boycotts like we did in days of old. No more shopping for clothes and shoes and the unnecessary things until we see a change in the laws. I'm talking about making a difference. Amen. And if you don't want to get out there, we know that there's power in prayer. Huh? Yes, yes, if yes, my people yes. who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. God wants us to do something, and there's something for everyone to do. You can stand right on the steps and pass out tracks. You can stand on the corner and say, praise the Lord. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? We have power, church. We have buying power and privilege. We did it before with Dr. King, and we can do it again. No justice. No peace. no peace. Walk in the spirit. Walk in power. For God has not given us again, I say, the spirit of fear. But he has given us the spirit of power, of love, and a strong mind. Ephesians 3.20 says, God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask or think by the power that is in you and me. Yeah. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. You can do what? All, all things. things through Christ who strengthens me. We've got the power to walk in power. We have the Holy Ghost power. When we look at Paul, the Bible lets us know that Paul was a mighty warrior. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I heard someone say today, that is God's grace. Yes. Paul had a thorn in his flesh. Yes. And he sought the Lord three times, asking the Lord to remove yes. the thorn. Yes. 
And no one knows for certain what the thorn is, but some of the commentators say that he wasn't able to see so well. But even though he couldn't see well, if that was the situation, he wrote over three thirds of the New Testament. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. He set up churches, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he was a powerful man, but he said, my grace, the Lord's grace is sufficient. We ought to say, God, by your grace, your grace, for God's grace is sufficient to do what God has called us to do. God is intentional about his children. He loves us and each and every one of us have a call on our life. The pastor was called to preach to you, but you're called to minister to the pastor as well. We're here to minister to one another and to give our God praise. Walk in power. Walk in the spirit. Be led by the spirit. Be fed by the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. Like on the day of Pentecost. Know that God lives in you. And God lives big in you. Paul turned the world, him and, and the apostles turned the world upside down. So you have the power and I have the power to do the same thing that Paul did. Because God has no respect of persons. If he did it for Paul, he'll do it for you. Amen. 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 So I charge you today to walk in your power. I don't care how old you are. Huh? Yeah. Even if it's on the telephone, calling people and praying for people, going down the sick list. Come on, somebody. Somebody absent from church. You have the power to make a difference. Walking in the spirit, no matter what my age is, no matter how I feel, I'm just like the apostles. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.